going to now look at some landscapes. So this next collection of photographs are of my gouache paintings. Some are painted in the Himalayas in Bhutan, and some are painted upstate in New York. And what's going to be interesting is to see you know, whether you can tell which are which. And I'm not going to test you all, but mm -hmm. I think you'll become, it'll become clear that really landscape, when it really is in its exalting mood, is, is, is beautiful wherever it is. And yes, trees change, and again, we can become very deductive and say, well, that's a specific type of tree that, of course, only exists in the Himalayas. Absolutely. But I want you guys to look at it and in the sense of how it makes you feel, even on this screen here, as opposed to always the process. So this is a photograph of a gouache painting I did with Chinese ink on Indian paper. And uh, the next one is a gouache I did on Indian paper with the high Himalayas in the background. And I love this sort of Neptunian mist. You can see glimpses of the mountains. And then other parts feel totally shrouded in this. I like that sense of mystery. I think symbolically we have to try and have a little bit more mystery again in our lives. When we actually start breathing from our diaphragms, our, actually, our whole chemical structure changes. And I've noticed as the world gets angrier, we breathe less from our diaphragm. Me included, we all do. And that's, I think that's one of the great lessons we can take away from today. So when we leave here, why don't we breathe a little deeper from our diaphragm? Suddenly, we'll love a little bit more and hate a bit less. The next photograph is a gouache I painted on American paper. And it's in the Catskills. This was a moody day looking at Twin Peaks in the Catskills. I mean, I don't know about any of you, but this looks terribly Eastern. This looks Chinese or Himalayan. I, I love that, the dance between East and West. I've been learning a little bit about geomancy, this notion of sacred space and balancing. And, and maybe in some ways, you know, I innately understand it. But to learn about it and to see this, I did this gouache in, um, in Bhutan, um, on the road, I think, between Thimpu and, and Paro. And this is perfect example of that geomancy, the proportion of this secluded temple, Buddhist temple, with the backdrop of the mountain. It's been perfectly positioned there, and it's very sacred. So wherever I'm going now, I'm sort of more aware of how, how buildings are placed, and whether they're placed well or not well. And that's sort of a subtlety that we have to constantly learn in our lives as we grow in this incarnation. Because I also think it's reflective of who we are too. And that's the positive aspect of structure, is growing and being aware, self-aware. And knowing in a way that all the journeys, the greatest journeys, are the journeys within, as opposed to always without. You know, a lot of people say to me, oh, you're so lucky you've been to close to 100 countries. Well, we can do it all in this state if you want, if you keep your eyes open. I mean, take New York City. It's the biggest cosmopolitan city in the world. I mean, I was in Queens the other day. We'll get to the, the, the Sikh temple. I was hanging out with Koreans. I mean, it's all here. So we can find the jewel of life in the microcosm, which then, it, that then sort of relates to the macrocosm. It's like the drop in the ocean. You go back and forth between the two. This is Kripalu. I went to this meditation center in uh, October last year. Talking about Feng Shui, it's, it's beautifully positioned. It's a former Jesuit seminary. And it looks out on this lake in the Berkshires. And I did this mixed media painting. I started it when I was there on my last day. And it's, it's very atmospheric for, for me. And the position of the building is, is beautifully positioned, much like the previous slide. The next painting is Indian ink on Chinese rice paper, painted by an Englishman, upstate New York. <laughs> so you're, you've got a lot of stuff going on here. I called it the Lonely Oak. But it's more about solitude, because loneliness in a sense is slightly full of despair, where solitude has a strength in it. You know, that again could be really quite Eastern, couldn't it, the way I've used the paper. It's very thin Chinese rice paper. And using the ink in a way which is some, somewhat reminiscent of the way the Chinese apply it. So here we have, instead of in the incarnation of a tree, we have a human being in a silent meditation. And this is a gouache I did. I just created it, but they've got the lonely tree there in the middle as well. I've always been a painter and a photographer, so when I was uh, 14, my father gave me my first Pentax camera, and I had a dark room by the time I was 17, 18. Of course, it wasn't digital then. And uh, I think I had my first watercolour exhibition when I was 17. So for many years, they were totally separate. But in the last, I'd say, five, seven years, I've definitely been blending them. So I still paint, and I still photograph independently, but I love to marry them. 
because part of it is a trick of the eye. You can't quite tell where one starts and the other one finishes, or vice versa. And in a way, what it's trying to do is to force you out of your intellectual, rational hemisphere, to go into the sense of how does it make you feel?